all the money goes to the Open Hand Foundation, an organization that we started in honor of my mom, and all that money goes to Dementia Research. <laughs> Well guys, it's a tale as old as time. We once again are looking at a situation where a huge YouTuber is being exposed for doing something terrible in the shadows. How original. The frequency of stuff like this almost makes me think that I might have like an alter ego out there somewhere planning something naughty while I'm just sitting here oblivious because there's gotta be something that happens to you once you reach a certain level of success on YouTube that just turns you into a bad guy because we see stuff like this too often. Now I'm sure that many of you are already very very much aware of what we're talking about today, but if you are not, there is a YouTuber named The Completionist who has been a relevant name for quite some time at this point and has been making videos for over a decade. Now as his name would imply, his main shtick is 100% completing video games, but he also does a lot of stuff like video game reviews and skits, and he's been a big name in the gaming world for quite some time. Where a lot of you guys might also recognize him from is from a charity event called Indie Land, an event he started in 2018 to highlight indie games and help fight dementia. Now, the completionist, aka Gerard Khalil, did not start this event alone. He started it in partnership with the Open Hand Foundation, a charity that was founded by Gerard's father when Gerard's mother was diagnosed with dementia. This charity has been ran by the Khalil family and has been a non-profit since 2014, raising money for dementia research. With most of their money coming from the event Indyland, which claims to have raised over $600,000 for dementia research. Which, you know, sounds awesome. This guy with a huge social media presence has found an unorthodox way to raise money for something that personally affected him and millions of other people, while simultaneously helping people who are trying to follow their dream of game development get noticed. On paper, it sounds pretty cool. However, as I'm sure you can tell by the tone of this video, and, uh, you know, the title, that's not really what's been happening. Carl Jobst and Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers recently released two videos where they exposed the completionist and his foundation for not donating a singular cent of any of the money that has been donated to them. The Open Hand Foundation being a 501c has their tax records public and genuinely not a single penny has been filed as donated yet. And it's only been nine years. What has been filed, however, is over 780,000 untaxed dollars in donations with 125,195 of those dollars missing due to operating expenses, with majority of those operating expenses being unknown due to every single year, most if not just all of those expenses are listed under other expenses. So, uh, yeah. Who knows what prompted Carl and Mudahar to go down this rabbit hole, but they did, and they found something pretty gross. And we all know that if Carl Jobs to makes a video about you, and you didn't recently set a speedrun world record, it's probably not good for you. Now this story has been taking the internet by storm, it seems like everybody is talking about it right now, and I think for very good reason, I think as many people as possible should be talking about this right now, because things like this far too often go unchecked. This is not the first, and it is definitely not the last time we're ever gonna see a YouTuber do something shady, but hopefully this could be the last time we see somebody like this get called out for something like this and have nothing happen. This reminds me of a certain incident where another YouTuber pulled something where they took took some money from some people, and they never paid it back. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Well, probably not, because this happens so often that there's too many specific incidents to think about. So hopefully, this does not just turn into something that's thrown into the internet drama pile and forgotten about by everybody in three days, and we actually see something done. However, I uh, think that is probably unlikely, because Mudahar and Carl got in touch with Gerard, and they talked to him, and his response to all this is not exactly what I would call promising. Now I'm going to be covering the main points here, the big stuff that really caught my eye, but I'm not going to be going through every single last detail, and that's because I don't really want to steal traffic from these guys. They very obviously did a whole lot of work, they put in their due diligence here, and they presented two very well-crafted, informative videos, and I highly, highly recommend you go give them a watch, because you are going to be missing out on information if not, and that is on purpose, okay? This video is more just me trying to spread the word and get what's going on out to a bigger 
audience because I feel like everybody is kind of tired of seeing stories like this and the more people talking about it, the more people bringing attention to it, the better. So Carl and Mudahar uploaded these videos where they went through the Open Hand Foundation's tax filings and they saw this consistent behavior year after year of taking this money in from donations, writing off a portion of it for expenses, and then stockpiling the cash, not donating any of it. Which is very questionable behavior considering that every single year during these live streams, Gerard would say that all the money is going towards research for dementia, using very specific wordage like all the money is being donated, saying stuff like we get none of it, none of it goes to us, naming certain foundations, naming certain places they're donating to. All the while, it's all a lie. None of this is actually happening. The money has been and is still sitting in a bank account doing nothing, losing money to inflation, doing nothing to benefit the fight against dementia. Now you might ask questions like how do we know that it's still in a bank account? Maybe this year they finally donated it and since taxes haven't been filed yet we wouldn't know. Well, I appreciate your optimism but Carl and Mudahar got on a discord call with Gerard and they questioned him about this money and he answered. He basically said that during this entire time, time that he has been ahead of this foundation, he was under the impression the money was being donated. He had no idea whatsoever until 2021 that the money has just been sitting around. I kid you not, his defense is that up until 2021, he was just under the assumption the money was going to a charity. Then, in 2021, when he found out it wasn't, he started to look for a benefactor he was comfortable with receiving this money, and he hasn't been able to find one. So, a uh, rough timeline, if he got lost there. For seven years, he just assumed the money was going somewhere that needed it, and never asked a single question. Never once did he find it kind of strange that no one in the organization talked about where or who the money was going to in seven years. He just assumed everything was running the way it should. And then, when he found out it wasn't, suddenly, this guy is Mr. Scrutiny. Literally does not care enough to ask a single question for seven years, but now that he's in the know? Oh, if anybody's gonna get this money, he's gonna know how many times they sneeze in a month. Because after two years, he still can't find anybody. What seems more likely? That, or the possibility that they were just holding onto this money for who knows what reason? I think I know my guess. I mean, you'd think with $780,000 they could hire a PR guy for a few days. I guess that might not fall under other expenses though, so uh. But seriously, the guy's argument is that he doesn't want this money going towards administration fees or expenses, yet, you know, the only thing it's been doing for nine years is paying administration fees and expenses. I mean, come on, buddy. You could have said you don't want this money to go to literally anything else, and it would be hard to make an argument against you. But instead, you chose to say you don't want this money going towards exactly what you've been using it for. Come on. It also really doesn't help the perception of this entire thing that in the written responses that they gave to Carl, they kept harping on the fact that they have done nothing illegal. And if they did, the government would be cracking down on them instantly. Somehow implying that fraud doesn't exist anymore, I guess. Which I feel like if this ends up going to court, which who knows what's going to happen here, this will likely be seen as charity fraud. I mean, you can't tell people for a decade that the money they're donating is going towards charity and then just hold on to it indefinitely. I mean, you just can't do that. And I don't think the whole argument of, oh, I was just trying to find the right organization is going to hold up really well. I feel like the obvious response to that is, well, maybe you should have found one before you started taking people's money. Seems kind of obvious to me, but hey, I don't have a nonprofit. It gets even more shady when these guys have named specific organizations that apparently they've been supporting, it would be one thing if they were just kind of skirting around the fact that the money wasn't going anywhere this entire time. That would be one thing. They might be able to get away with that. I don't know. But they've been naming specific organizations, specific universities, specific places this money is going, and well, the taxes don't lie. The money's not going there. I spent a little bit looking for tax codes and laws, seeing if I could find any information on how long a charity has to donate money given to them, if there are any limitations. And honestly, I couldn't really find any, but I would imagine that something like this in court would be treated similarly to obscenity. You know, the whole, I can't tell you what it is, but I know it when I see it. I think it's very hard to argue that accepting nine years worth of donations and never using a single penny of it for what people think they're donating it for is not fraudulent. One year, okay. Two years, that's pushing it. Almost a decade of no sort of action. I don't see how that would hold up. But that's really the gist of the situation so far. Like I said, I highly recommend you guys go 
go and give both Carl's and some Ordinary Gamers video a watch. Like I mentioned, they got on a Discord call with Gerard, so if you think that I'm exaggerating this stuff, go hear it from the horse's mouth. This is really what they're trying to play this off as, and uh, I think that's unexcusable. Hopefully, something will come out that will explain all of this, but honestly, I don't know what really could. I guess the best resolution here would be that all the money ends up going to charity, and I think that they should answer to what these expenses are. I'm curious if they were really necessary. Well, guys, what are your thoughts? This is definitely one of the more serious YouTuber situations we've looked at. I'm really curious to see if Twitch or YouTube do anything about this, but I mean, given the response to the Sniper Wolf situation, I'm not very hopeful. And also, considering that earlier today someone at the Open Hand Foundation tried to get Carl's video taken off YouTube, I doubt we're gonna see a very pretty ending to this. We'll see. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Thank you.